when a series converges by the integral test, we actually get a good method for estimating the sum. So let's take a look at this problem. Now, we know that the series that for 1 over n squared, as n goes from 1 to infinity, will have as its sum pi squared over 6, which is roughly 1.645. Okay, so suppose we didn't know that. Suppose I wanted to know how could I find a partial sum that comes within 0.1 of that's the sum of the series. So the idea would be as I just want to take the first n terms of my series and try to get within 0.1 of the sum. So the integral test actually gives you a means for figuring out when I take a partial sum, how much am I off from the sum by? Let's look at the picture and then we'll get the answer. So if I have my picture for a convergent series, let's see what happens. The partial sum would be all the rectangles in the picture that I drew during the lecture part that are go up to or below our point n. So we have a bunch of rectangles, and then we're going to have a lot of stuff trailing off to infinity. So if you notice, I want to get a handle on the areas that are going off to infinity. Well, if you note, heuristically speaking, these areas here are going to be bounded underneath the curve going from n to infinity of f of x that we fitted to our curve. So that means if I take the improper integral from n to infinity, that's going to be a bound for the error in my partial sum. All the stuff we're not using in the partial sum is going to be captured by the improper integral starting from n. So let's see how we use that numerically. So the idea is going to be I know the sum, well, we really don't know it, but we know that we can call it a name S. We rewrite that as the formal sum in sigma notation. And note that this is equal to my partial sum at n. And then we're just going to add in the terms a sub n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, and all the way off. I move my S sub n to the other side. And so this is going to be this piece I'm trying to get under point 0.1. That's going to be equal to all of these terms. Each of these is going to be equal to the area of the rectangle that goes with, say, a sub n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, a sub n plus 3. The bases have length 1, so that's going to give me the area of the rectangle. And then that's going to be bounded below, as we noted before, the definite integral, the improper integral, n to infinity of f of x dx. And then the case that we're looking at, we're looking at 1 over n squared. So I'm going to do this improper integral over 1 over x squared dx. When we work that out, we have x to the minus 2, so we add 1 and flip it over. And then when I put b and n in, take their difference, I'm going to have 1 over n minus 1 over b. Taking the limit as b goes out to infinity, this first term is going to drop out, leaving me with a 1 over n. So what's the idea here? I've just figured out that s minus s sub n will be less than 1 over n. So if I find an n such that 1 over n is less than 0.1, then s minus s sub n is also going to be less than 0.1. So what will that mean? Well, if I just put the 0.1 down here, the n up there, that's saying I want an n that's bigger than 10 or n equal to 11. Now, that's my answer, n equals 11. Let's check that. Okay, I write out the first 11 terms of the partial sum. So it's 1 plus a half squared, which is a quarter, plus a third squared, which is 1 ninth, or 0.111, and then so on, all the way out to 1 over 11 squared. I add all these up, I get 1.558. Okay, that's rounding off to the third decimal place. I'm going to take the difference between the sum that I know, which is 1.645, subtract off 1.558, and that's going to give me 0 0.0869, and that's definitely less than 0.1. So using the 11th partial sum gets me to within 0.1 of the actual sum. And note, I didn't need the original sum to do that, I just used that for the check. The integral test 
will guide you to your answer. It won't tell you the exact sum, but it'll give you an estimate. All right, for part B, same trickery. We know S minus S sub N, in this case, is going to be less than 0.01. Okay, I want it less than 1 over N, and we want 1 over N less than 0.01. So that's going to give me, flipping things over, N bigger than 100. So I'll go with N equal to 101. If we want to go to the numbers, we should do some light programming instead of using a calculator. So let's take a look. So our 101st partial sum, the first 101 terms, are going to add up to 1.635. Our sum, remember, is pi squared over 6. gives us 1.6449. If I take their difference, I get 0 0.00985, which is definitely less than 0 0.01.